Welcome to Healings and Meditations with Frank Jordan and the Earth Mind Think Tank Group. We take requests for healings in the second hour. If you simply wish to make a healing request, please type into the chat room on wolfspiritradio.com with the name of the person, the location, and the condition that the person needs healing. You're listening to Wolf Spirit Radio. Joan, are you going to do your piece? I'm ready. Good evening, <laughs> everyone. Good. This is Sunday, November 16th, 2014. Universal Mind Radio, in conjunction with Wolf Spirit Radio, would like to present to you two hours of meditation and discussion by Frank Jordan. So, Frank, this evening we're going to have an hour, the first hour of discussion, and uh, this is when sometimes you bring in someone called Stephen. You refer to him as your higher consciousness. Can you tell us a little about that before we get started? Well, a lot of people talk about guides and and aspects of higher consciousness, psychics and people who, who um, play around in those realms. And um, this is one that may have been out there for a long time, most of my life. I don't know. But it, it, when it, Stephen comes in, it seems to bring other dimensional reality or higher information in that is not in the earth plane consciousness in any experiences that I've observed or of, of uh, as humans having. And it seems to fit pretty well with with Francis, which also is a, a higher state of consciousness, my high self, I believe. And and Francis is the one that's the intellectual the thinker, the dreamer, the healer, the one that organizes the metaphysical realm. And then I have Frank, the old cowboy, that uh, <laughs> just kind of steps aside and lets these others come through when it's important. And... Um, so I, th- I think that most of us have these, possibly have or can open up to these these higher or alternate levels of consciousness. The thing about Stephen is it very insistently tried to come in for like six months. I'd feel it come in the top of my head and and push down into me, but I was very adamantly would reject it because I've had entities, very powerful entities do the same thing. So finally, one day it was pretty insistent, and I said, well, I'm tired of backing out. I'm going to let you come in, and I'll deal with you internally. So it did. It took a couple hours in the evening to come in and settle in, and I went to sleep. Had a good night and woke up the next morning, and I I was looking out of four eyes, two sets of eyes, and I I thought, "Uh uh-oh, this is a full indweller. And a full soul indweller. So uh, I said, okay, we've got to get this fixed. So I sat down and went into meditation and took a couple of hours and just letting it attune to my frequencies and my chakras and my planes of consciousness so that it could express through me simply by, by um, Francis stepping aside and, and letting it speak. But it, it when it does... <laughs> Francis and Frank just set, steps aside and, and lets it roll, and we don't have a clue of what to expect, but it's it's usually pretty profound, interesting information. Okay, so Stephen is the one that delivers the information about the shift of consciousness. You, you describe it so much better than I do. Okay. Okay, and you're also an active water, mineral, and missing persons dowser and healer. You're from Boise, Idaho, and you have been an empathic intuitive for over 40 years. That's quite a history. For more information on Frank before we get started, his website is www.psytronics.com. That's P-S-I-T-R-O-N-I-C-S dot com. His phone number, if you would like more information or to talk, contact him personally, 208-344-9188. It's 
888 and his email address fljordan at cable1.net. Okay, Frank, take it away. Well, thank you, <clears throat> and uh, welcome all of you EarthMind Healers in the, in the EarthMind Healers group that come together to speak internationally on the Universal World Mind Radio Network. Universal Mind Radio Network, that's what it is, uh, dot com. The network's not in there, I'll get it right yet. But anyway, um, had an interesting experience today with a client that came kind of in the back door. Um, I was, and this made me think about something that we could discuss tonight. And I'd like to invite you other healers to bring through really exceptional or different kinds of things that you've worked with and situations you've experienced that could give the, our listening audience a, a more rounded perception of, of how everything works out here. Because frankly, 99.9% of the people on earth don't have a clue. But our insights that we gain while healing, and I'll give you one shortly here, open this up to the really broader realm of, of human consciousness and, and, and what we're experiencing here and more importantly, possibly what we're evolving into as we move into dominion and higher states of consciousness. But this case this afternoon, uh, I was working on a fellow who came to me because he was going, coming into a new relationship and he'd had a really severely um, you know, how can I say it? Disruptive childhood. Uh, his parents fought constantly and he, he really couldn't express himself. And his dad was constantly beating on the three kids and, and the wife and, and, uh, it, it really, he, he did not, uh, he was a Scorpio, and so he did, did have the personal power to, to, to be observant of himself, and to protect himself from the trauma, the, the sheer dynamic negative energy in that home, and he pulled back in and just surrounded himself with a shield and shut down his heart so that no matter what happened to him, he couldn't be emotionally hurt. And I've seen this quite frequently in, in people who have had really traumatic, negative emotional childhoods and abuse, is that they just close down their heart chakra so they can't be injured or can't, they, they go through it and participate in it, but it's just like it's happening to someone else when they do. And unfortunately, if they don't get that opened up, that carries right on into their, their own later relationships and marriages. And becomes very detrimental to having a good home life and because they just tend to recycle it again and again and again. And uh, so a lot of my clearing work in the past has been clearing out these negative patterns in, in, in people so they can open their hearts and open up to their their mates and relationships and experience life. But then what happened, and I want to tell you about, is that at the end of the session – well, all during the session, there, there's a little four-year-old boy been running around in the background doing what a four-year-old does. And uh, at the end of the session, he came and climbed up in this fellow's lap. And the fellow introduced him. <clears throat> and this was uh, his child from a failed marriage. And uh, uh, he's a beautiful child, you know, as all four-year-olds are. But he, he was, he couldn't talk. He wouldn't talk. He could mumble and, but he refused to get into conversation or, or to use language. And that intrigued me because I've encountered this in the past. So uh, the fellow let the little guy down and run around some more. And he asked me if there's anything I could do. And, uh, not really realizing that I could. And I said, yeah, I'll, I'll do a reading on him and see what I find. Well, when I went into him, his low self, as in most four-year-olds, was totally in control. But these low self uh, psychic energies are, are so intuitive and so psychic that he had tuned into his father 
uh, his father's childhood. Because his father was just radiating that same stuff into him that the father had experienced. And this, uh, even though the, this fellow wasn't abusive to the little guy, he, uh, the little fellow picked all this up and, and he kind of made the choice that he wasn't going to participate in this life or as a human. He he preferred to be the little animal consciousness that most four-year-olds are. Because I recognized a long time ago that uh, four-year-old, four to five, is where children make the transition from being totally dominated by their low self animal consciousness into uh, being trained and organized and, and programmed by their parents to be human. And as a, in the next couple of years, when they go to school, they're prepared to go out into the human environment and accept the fact that they're human. But this little guy was determined he wasn't going to do that. And if, if he couldn't talk, then he wouldn't have to go to school or to get out into that wider physical world. And I kind of admired him for that that uh, concept that he came up with all by himself of avoiding the negativity of being human. But when I went into him more, I realized that his high self was not indwelling in his body. It was hanging out above him. And I've encountered this in others, too. So I communicated to the high self, to look, uh, this little guy's going to have to learn how to talk and become human if he's going to get along in this life. And it said, well, he's got a, the high self indicated that he had a, a block against that. And if I would clear the block, he would come in. So I did. I went into the little guy and cleared the block. And um, this perception, this resonance that he had with his, the low self of his father that was crea- actually creating the problem, and uh, the high self very quickly moved in and settled in, and, and uh, I helped it to get really locked in so it, it could begin taking over. And, uh, and then I knew that he would probably go ahead and very quickly allow his language skills to develop, so I pulled back out and told his father about that. But the whole point I want to make is, is how many times... Do you healers encounter autistic children out here, really highly intelligent children that can't talk and things of this nature? Um, many times when I worked with them, uh, the same thing had occurred. They, they, they were running on instinct and a disassociated high self that was not in the body. And by bringing it in and and unifying the soul flow into the system, so it could could send down mountain messages from the mountaintop, so to speak. Um, that's how they proceeded to get better and and learn to be human, or to participate in life. But that got me to thinking also that all of you, you healers, have different experiences out here. And I'd like to encourage you to come forward and share some of your experiences so so we can all learn from them. And any of you out there in the listening audience who can relate to any of these problems we're going to bring up, um, simply give us a call. Get on the program, um, put your requests in, or call us directly for direct help. And we're here. We could do amazing things that, that conventional medical doctors don't even have a clue about as to how to deal with it. So does anyone have something they'd like to share? Frank, I do actually have a, a session that I've had in uh, – I'm a – a clinical hypnotherapist, and about two years ago, I had a young boy, and just to give you a description of, of what this young child was doing, it's probably about two years old, uh, you know, a very young little boy, and he literally would just take off across the room, turn around backwards, and throw himself head first onto the floor. That's a pretty dramatic event. And the first time I ever saw it, it was, it was just extraordinary. And he would have these fits where he would get a running start and dive under tables just like he was trying to hurt himself. And this was constant and he would not talk. He wouldn't speak. He just, he had just like he didn't even have language skills. And after doing a couple of hypnotherapy sessions, obviously I discovered that 
he was just inundated with entities, even from uh, before he was born, uh, was being attacked uh, intrauterine. So after clearing just, I mean, just truckloads of entities off of this young fellow and a couple of sessions and some other clearing work, uh, then slowly over a few weeks, he began to stop that behavior and he quit throwing himself on the floor and he actually started to speak. A little bit and at this point now it's been about two years and he seems to be about a 95 percent normal kid just from a couple of sessions of clearing entities off of him that's pretty dramatic well it is yes that's that's good does anyone else have any ideas um yeah i would like to share um this is rachel and there's a group her name is um Susie Miller, and there's a program, they call it Awesomeism, and they work um, directly with autistic children, and it's just an incredible program. They kind of have the same thing like we do with a whole group consciousness, and they talk to these children through telepathy, and they say that these kids are such a high-dimensional beings. And I know one case um, that they're working with this friend of mine, and her son was just so out there and um, working more in the galactic realms but just not grounded. And so just in a little bit of the work they did, he's now fully grounded. And his outrage and his violent behavior has calmed way, way, way down. And... Um, I just think that there's these children that are coming forward today because we're all moving forward in these high dimensional spaces. So we've called them forward and they're here on purpose. Um, so there is a program out there. Um, I highly recommend anyone to check it out. It's called Awesomeism with Susie Miller. <clears throat> thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, Yvonne, what do you have for us? Um, hi. Uh, good to be on the call. Very grateful. Um, so um, I, I, a very simple thing that works extremely well in my experience um, is that um, I just ask, you know, the great mystery or who, whatever you want to call the power, um, just to bring them more within normal limits because, you know, I don't know really what else to ask for but you know the parents know that their autistic spectrum I know that you know energetically I can't get anywhere near them because you know their energy field is so huge it's as big as the house and you know anything anything touching them feels like too much um and uh, I have great have had great um uh, results with that you know you uh, you get what you ask for and they become more within normal limits and um the other thing just to share is um you know as soon for me as very often you know as soon as you mention autistic spectrum it's quite a scary word for the parents so I always try and um, walk gently and maybe not even use that word. But the way that I um, get to describe it that parents can often really identify with, um, I, what I get to say to the parents is, you know how your child is very, very rigid and very narrow and can only do a very limited amount of things? So when, when, when the child comes more within normal limits, what you will find is you'll have a child with more flexibility who's able to do more things, not just the limited range of, you know, eating of foods and, um, other behaviors. And, uh, yeah, and I just love that. I really love it. So I usually will start there and, um, and, and of course, um, what I get to explain too to the parents is that, um, from my understanding and my experience, I, I work quite a bit with these children. Um, if the child gets one set of genetics from one pa only one parent only, then they're in the spectrum. But if they get the genetics from t the two parents, then they're full blown. And, um, you know, often the lights bulbs go off for the parents and, 
usually there's a similar clearing and balancing for the parents so that whole family unit is more within normal limits and ju- just outstanding. I mean, so simple but so profound. Very good. All right. Well, Rich, I know you've encountered these situations. What do you have to share with us? Well, I was trying to think. Of, there's one guy that I've been working with for months. Um, his parents approached me about six months ago, and he, he's 35 years old, and he's been autistic since the age of six. And... Um, I went back to his past life, and it all started back uh, generations ago, and it was a family flow from a, basically it was a curse that was put on his family. It was really crazy. It was, uh, I went back in time and took it out, reversed it, and brought forward uh, healing. And from that point on, he, he started to change. Um, if this guy was in full battle. I mean, he had a helmet on, gloves on, because he would sit for hours and bang his head against the wall. And they, the only thing they could do to protect him was to put a helmet on him, or he would try to hit himself. And so I finally got him to the point where he was no longer hitting hitting the wall. So now they were able to take the helmet off. He only has to wear the helmet maybe once in a great, great while. And what I discovered was that his brain had really not been developed. It was very, very primitive. And I started working um, in different areas of his brain, actually just sending energy into certain sections and lighting up the synapses of his brain. Um, and each, I was, I was guided. I've been guided by. Uh, my helpers to show me which, you know, which area. And I've been working on him daily now for, for quite a while. But now he's at the point where he's able to um, start actually, he puts sentences together, he communicates with people, uh, he listens to them and actually can respond. And, um, and I'm trying to get him now to be able to write, learn how to write. Mm-hmm. Did you bring his high self in, incidentally? Because a high self will not just will simply will not uh, dwell in a cluttered house. Yeah, I started out with uh, all that really basic stuff a long time ago, but it was a matter of teach. It was, it was a matter of getting the the body itself working. I found it was more of a physiological thing than a. Uh, the high and low self. I got the high and low self to cooperate and quit fighting each other because the low self wanted to destroy him, destroy himself. So I got the high self to communicate with the low self, and that's how I got him to stop doing the self torturing stuff. But it was a more. But this was really crazy because uh, it, the brain actually had not been developed. You know, it was a physiological thing, too. Mm-hmm. So I've been working on that, and I think I'm really making some progress finally. But it's taken uh, – I mean, I don't know anything about any of this. I've just been shown, you know, how to do things, and it's but it's all coming together slowly to this person. Mm-hmm. Well, there are no absolutes in any of this. Every one of them is unique and individual. So you can't rely on education for sure to set any perimeters or, or exact exactness. You you have to just go with your intuition and and literally become them, quite essentially, to understand what they're experiencing, like you did when you felt that his brain was developed. I know one thing that I've had some really tremendous success with is is. Um, is uh, this oh lost the word is where the dyslexia where they can't complete sentences they reverse words when they try to write and all of that kind of stuff 
Well, the first one of those that I encountered uh, after I began actively healing uh, was a student at Boise State University who was absolutely brilliant. But he, he couldn't write anything down. He had to memorize everything by reading and listening, and uh, and then it would would take an auditory exam, an audio exam, and that's and he was moving right along up through his his uh, college classes. Well, I went into him and discovered when I was being him that the, the I think it's called the corpus luteum between the two sides of the brain that hooks the brains up. They, they, it wasn't flowing naturally. There wasn't a flow of energy back and forth translating information from the right side of the brain, the intuitive brain, into the left side rational reasoning brain where he could use it. So consequently, uh, he couldn't make get coordinated enough to, to, to write. He'd just write gibberish. And so when I, I went into him and just sat there and, and opened these flows up between him, Actually, patterning to to my own brain, it is just the strangest feeling you can, I can describe of being in there, organizing his brain. And but when I finished, then uh, he uh, he felt incredibly different, more balanced and, and more focused and and uh, more cognizant. And I he left, and I didn't think any more about it. Till about a month later, he stopped in and brought me a most beautifully written paper that he'd composed and written. Just absolutely perfect. And it not only had the healing, but it had opened up his, his genius because, or gave it an opportunity to express because he, he, uh, was a genius. But he just had that one dysfunctionality in there and getting the two sides working together was all it took. So I've done that dozens of times with dyslectics ever since. Any other ideas? Um, I'd like to add one more if I can, please. Sure. Um, uh, cause I got that it was important to share important information and, um, it's actually on the Asperger's. What I've found very, very common with Asperger's that they're carrying a huge amount of grief. And, um, you know, they're just so sad that they don't fit in and they can't, you know, the, the grief of them if on them is so enormous. And then once that is lifted, they become way, you know, more within normal limits. The parents are always delighted and, you know, just to honor in them as well that, you know, this was really sad, wasn't it? You know, you... It was sad. Nobody really understood you. Nobody was there for you. And, you know, well done. And now you're moving on to better things. So it's always lovely to help them move through that. Mm-hmm. Well, could that Asperger's then be like they're carrying the family's grief or even the world's grief? Yeah, I get a yes on that. Absolutely. Because, yeah, they're so bright and so awake. I get a yeah. big yes on that. Yvonne, how many sessions did it take with this person? Oh, for me, it's always one, uh, one session, and there's a big turnaround. Um, but, you know, I've seen, I have seen many, and I guess I, I've got a bit of a, you know, my favorite recipe book <laughs> <laughs> of what works. Well, I think that's exactly right on because it's, you can't approach any of these with a set of conclusions like a, a normal psychiatrist would trying to fit them, uh, diagnose and fit them into a form. You, you just have to flow with what is needed in following intuition and guidance. And, and uh, um, who else do we have that does this type of work? I, I know that Teresa... <laughs> has been exposed to quite a few people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had a, uh, this is Teresa. Hi, everyone out there in the world of listening land. Uh, I had a pretty exciting experience um, uh, with uh, a lady that uh, was a a truck driver, and she was at a, 
a truck stop and was lured into stopping because they pretended, oh, it was a man and a woman, they pretended that uh, she had a flat tire. So she got out of the truck and they were trying to hijack her truck and hit, they uh, attacked her and beat her and broke uh, ribs and uh, her neck. And she did manage to uh, uh, get back into the truck. And it was two years ago. And she had an ex- uh, a, a fear of getting anywhere near a truck, even just seeing one uh, within several hundred yards of herself. Uh, she would vomit. And, and she just couldn't handle it. And she has been seeing, having some assistance with uh, psychologists and she came to me because she couldn't seem to get past this one point and my husband was helping her by letting her uh, touch the trucks and go near it because he works in a in a yard where they sell trucks and uh, I came across uh, some information from a friend about the body perceiving things uh, as allergies and uh it's like it's like it becomes a phobia and it be, it's like a body's disproportionate res- response to anything for example uh with a cat allergy the body responds as though it's a giant saber-toothed tiger and it's going to eat it alive when it's only a little bit of cat hair and so what we did was essentially um we had the high soul discuss the issue with the low soul and come to an agreement and, you know, the high soul basically expressing uh, uh, gratitude for it, the low soul protecting it for all these years and uh, giving the low soul credit for 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 protecting it and <clears throat> then the high soul explains to the low soul that you know basically because of you I've I now have new learnings and understandings and whatever the issue is can be a good thing and <clears throat> also the gesture that was taught to us I have to uh bring this back is if you write the word down uh, on a p- tiny piece of paper and hold it at the base of your brain uh, and the body can actually perceive it and also touching some meridian points on the over the bridge of the nose and on the third eye and you, you repeat it uh, over and over again talking to the high soul talking to the low soul and the high soul basically tells the low soul that we can now be in alignment and live in harmony with whatever it is. In this case, the lady did, we talked about trucks, but then she still panicked. And I said uh, to her, okay, I want you to just look at the truck and how do you feel about the truck? And we doused from a scale from 1 to 10, 10 being worst, 1 being like it doesn't bother at all. And we managed to get it down from a, uh, she was at that point was at a nine, and we got it down to a one by repeating the conversation the, over and over again. And then I took her back to the visually back to the truck yard and asked her, "Okay, look at the truck now. What are you focusing on?" And she she said the wheels. And if you recall, the the beginning of the story was the whole issue for being. Uh, tricked into pulling over was because of a wheel. And as she said the word wheel, her face went white. So we went through this whole conversation again with the high soul talking to the low soul. And now she's, she hasn't laughed in two years. And now she's laughing. She can, she's even driving the truck now. It's really quite phenomenal. And I, I'm so proud of her for being brave enough to trust me because she's She's kind of a rough, tough kind of a gal, <laughs> but she opened up to this, and I'm so grateful that she did. I'm so proud of her. 
Oh, that's beautiful, Teresa. And the lesson there is that with the realization that we have a high indwelling soul that operates mostly through consciousness and we have a low soul that actually operates the physical body and everything associated with it, we, we can realize that the chakra levels above the heart deal with, with emotional energy and relationships and outer consciousness and things like that. But below the heart, we're dealing in the, in the physical plane and the instinctive consciousness of, of the animal. And uh, they have to work together. And so by learning to communicate between the two, the high self talking to the low self, and deprogramming from the low self any shocks or traumas or, or things that it throws up that interferes with the function of the high self is really what this clearing the way work is all about. And it's a great breakthrough in consciousness and ability to, to be able to do that. Uh, the, who else has some suggestions tonight? Um, can I add one more thing that's really important in my experience, Frank? Sure. Um, when you work with these children in these different spectrums, it's really important to know that their energy field is huge. They at least fill the room, you know, if not more. And so, you know, if you come at them with any force or intention, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. So you have to really come from that place of stillness and love and honoring where they're at. And often that means, um, you know, that I don't actually treat the first time, but just let them know. And then once they know they've been honored and respected and that they're, they were safe and that there was some love there, which would have impacted them, they would have felt it. Then what you'll find is you've got a willing participant. But until you're at that point, you can't treat. And I was teaching a similar thing with animals. With animals, it's a bit similar. And you really need to connect with the animal heart to heart. And you have to have permission to enter the system. Otherwise, it's a waste of everyone's time. Thank you. Yes, yes, beautiful. Mm -hmm. And that's interesting. That reminds me of a client I had not too long ago that was a dog trainer and uh, just loved dogs and she had a, a, a pretty wide range of customers and uh, but and she does training she knows how to train dogs but uh, she wanted to know about animal communication and so I very quickly showed her this, how communicating between myself and her, how to feel various intents and energies. And, uh, and when we're doing telepathy, for example, uh, telepathy is not a train of thought. A plus B equals C as we use in the frontal lobe of the brain to rationally understand something, uh, in a rational linear throw. Telepathy is is it like a thought ball where you you gather the, the information, the energy of the form, and project that to a person, and it, it, instantly their system picks it up and downloads it through their subtle energy system and and sends it back up to the front lobe of the brain for, for translation into A plus B equals C again. And so I, I showed her how to do this with, with her dogs, how to just, she had one right on, we were doing it over Skype, believe it or not. She had a couple of little dogs there and I, I and I showing her how to, to, to telepath a, a thought form, uh, a fully organized energetic thought form to these dogs and she could see the response in them immediately. Their little ears perked up, they cocked their heads and looked at her and were listening to her. Um, telepathically and so uh, I, I learned years ago on the ranch to do that with my horses when I was riding them I could guide them, actually guide them telepathically by sending a thought packages to them just before I even knew anything about healing but cowboying is so mortally boring you got to have something to do out there you know so that's what I did uh, but uh <laughs> 
the thought is that we can talk to the low self with telepathic communication because it doesn't really have a language. It, it, its language is, is the language of feeling. Uh, but we can communicate with it with intent. Intent creates that bundle of, of thought form and desire and will formulates it. And when you project it, it, it's, it's picked up by these low self animal levels of consciousness as an instinctive response and they, uh, respond to it. So that's just one thought. Nice stuff. Um, Jackie, you dealt with in a lot of fields and in your day. How, do you have anything to tell us? No, not in the nature of um, working with children, I don't, Frank. Well, it doesn't matter whether it's children or anything else, you know. Well, not not off the top of my head. I'd have to do some thinking about it. All right. I, I apologize. <laughs> How about you, Dent? I know you do a lot of psychic work also. Hello? <clears throat> I worked for a long time with the adult mentally ill, and that was prior to coming into any contact with you or the the type of healing work that you teach and that you have taught me to do. So what I've been doing since I've learned about how to actually heal myself and to encourage others through your techniques to heal themselves I haven't, I haven't in, attempted to work with any children. So it's always been working with people who have really no understanding of <laughs> what I'm trying to do for them. So it, if, if they're not able to take it on, on their own intuitive knowledge that it's real, it, it's, it's kind of bouncing off their frontal lobes. And so, I've been just basically, since I've been working with you and the healing group here, I've just been downloading a lot of information, and I know that in the future it's going to come up, and it's going to be uh, very valuable. Mm -hmm. I really relate to Yvonne when it comes to uh, working with animals, and to you with this telepathic uh, technique. I've been, I have a really, really uh, strong affinity towards all animals and they seem to reciprocate with that and I, and I can, I can get close to strange animals that are generally very non-friendly to strangers and they become very friendly with me very quickly. And it's because I approach them with my heart and um, I can usually put my forehead on their heads and and somehow communicate how much I care for animals and them in particular. And they seem to reciprocate. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really, it's, it's very, I, I know that animals are so much more than the products that, 99% of the people in the world use them for, uh, and it's, it's my, my wish is to help people realize the value of animals as, as sentient, as beings, as, you know, cat people, dog people, horse people. <laughs> yeah. Well, but you've I, all watched uh, Caesar, Caesar, the dog whisperer on TV. Yeah. Yes, I the way he controls dogs, he, he can just, you'll notice he's concentrating very hard on that dog. Right. Uh, when he reaches out and puts his hand on them, they just go limp. Right. Well, he's projecting dominance and, and mastery to those dogs before he ever touches them. Right. And, and, uh, that's, that's the secret that, that he's demonstrating these things and that he really doesn't tell us what he's doing and it's telepathically. Right. He, before, before he ever walks in that cage with that dog, he's already mastering that thing telepathically. 
Exactly. And we can do that with our low cells too, exactly the same way. Yeah, that that was really fascinating for me to, to hear about the communication between the uh, high self and the low self that Teresa was talking about. I, mm-hmm. I think that's a really uh, fantastic thing, Teresa. JP, you have a long history of dealing with with strange people. <laughs> what do you have to share with us? Dealing with strange people, uh, <laughs> including <laughs> myself, uh, of course, um, at the top of the list. Well, yeah, oh, it's strangeness. <laughs> it's been a very strange weekend, I have to say. Um, and uh, it's it's like uh, what was a, a gentle uh, ripple is now a judder and a shudder. If you see what I mean, the, the frequency is speeded up of of moving from one frequency uh, uh, of consciousness to another. That's what we've been feeling in the last couple of weeks anyway. Do you, so, how do you define that as group mind consciousness or what are you referring um, to? Uh, what am I referring to? It, well, in all I can, all I know is, is, is what, you know, what's, what happens in my little world and uh, and then I look out at the, at the the outside world, at you know other people's worlds, and and it's it seems to be a, a common thread sometimes that comes through. So, um, so my little world has been kind of up and down, absent and intense, and uh, uh, from uh, throwing from one extreme to the other mm-hmm. um, until I managed to master it. You see, it's it's like. Um, it's it's really very you know it's very much like in a boat when uh you when you're moving from uh a uh, 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 long the long waves of the deep ocean into the more more uh, abrupt waves of the of the harbor waves so it's uh the change in in energetic frequency how yeah how about that it's taken a bit to get used to yeah, I understand perfectly, <clears throat> and we could devote a whole show to working to talking about group mind consciousness, um, morphogenic fields, function of Earth mind, and uh, all of those those subtle energy fields of consciousness out there. These that we're working with within ourselves through the psychic center of our uh within ourselves <clears throat> those are are just exactly what we've been talking about here how to access the psychic center and with intent and translate it the information we're trying to telepathically pass on from a, a linear rational reasoning flow of information in the frontal lobes into an energetic pack package of thought that we can tr- transmit and that's the way the psychic center works too incidentally when you pick up information a psychic information it just bang it's just there and it's just just a, a quick impression usually and and when you focus on that through that center the, near the pineal gland or in the pineal gland when you focus on that, it seems to to extrapolate the information in the thought form and and send that to the rational reasoning center so we can understand it. And this is a process. Oh gosh, this is exactly what uh, what I call listening. When you really intently listen with your mind clear and just open attention between the psychic center or or the higher centers of consciousness, which, of course, work through that center that resonate to your frontal lobes of your brain, that can actually translate right down into running dialogue. And that's what we're listening to when when I'm listening to Francis and, and uh, more importantly, Stephen, because that's exactly how that comes in and gets translated into thought because when, when Stephen is talking, I, I am... I'm just in that step back state of listening, and yet it just comes through actively and attentively. It just is what I'm speaking of here right now because I've never really expressed this before or thought about what we're talking about. So we're getting an explanation of how psychic consciousness works and how to use that between the high self and the low self, the instinctive animal consciousness that operates through thought progression and imprint, desire, and will, and intent. 
Does that wrap it up? Any other thoughts on that? Give it another explain. <laughs> oh, Run that one by me once again, as it were. <laughs> okay. Let's back up and, and, and do it a little slower then. I'll see if I can remember it. Let's see. We're switching to Francis now. The rational, reasonable. All right. When we pass through that psychic center on our way back, going into the meditation state, at which I've helped you learn how to do, it opens up our inner field of consciousness. That psychic center, as I've explained many times, is the one that's connected to every other human out there in a direct connection. And by focusing your intent on one person, you open a channel of resonance. And you can use your, your psychic center several ways. You can, you can literally tune into the resonance of that person through the psychic center and, and use your subtle energy fields and to resonate into the physical energy fields. So, so, uh, if you wanted to see what that person's experiencing out there, you, you look out through their eyes and get a clairvoyant vision that resonates back into your system and, and back into your, uh, your, your, your visual centers where it's processed into, into a visualization. If it's an auditory thing, like what Rachel does, she would open up and it would come in, into her audio centers and be processed for delivery to the frontal lobe. And in her case, it also resonates to an oversoul consciousness that she's attuned into that helps to interpret and give her instant inner knowing of, about what she's communicating, and particularly when she uses the light language. When she uses the light language, that's the language of, of the DNA that that understands all languages. And the Russians have done extensive test work on this and come to the realization that our DNA understands all languages because it isn't the A plus B rational reasoning language that the the DNA is reading. It's a thought form. It's this package of energy that I'm talking about. That's what it picks it up. And then it it relates that into our our physical centers for processing and into our frontal lobes for understanding and uh clear sentience clear feeling like what what I do is simply using that center to come into a tomb of the person by putting my name on them anywhere they are <clears throat> and just translocating my a portion of my of my soul to them and turning and looking out their eyes so I'm in complete attunement with them and then I can open up and uh, through their bodies and literally feel everything in their body right down to the degree of their illnesses and miasms and thought forms and, and uh, everything else that they have patterned in their chakra system in their hard disk and Depending on what my conscious brain is still working on in the, in processing the person, I'm using this second connection to to read internally uh, where their source of information and and energy is stored, so that we can deprogram it if it has to be a negative thing that's affecting their their psyche or character traits or whatever. Whoa, boy, what? All right, this is an explanation of of why the clearing the way techniques work and how they work is to learning how to disassociate from your ego, this is your identity self, and come into recognition that you are one with that person you're working with, whether they're sitting across from you, four feet from you, or that you're looking at them through Skype a thousand miles away, or even over a telephone. And I notice that when I'm, <laughs> this is interesting, when I'm working over the telephone, <clears throat> I have to have that telephone up to my ear 
that it's almost like a, a resonance of energy comes through that even when they're not speaking. Uh, I have to have that connection. If I lay the phone down, the auditory connection, I, I lose the psychic connection uh, until I can reassess and tune into them through a different channel. So uh, <clears throat> I've lost the entire train of thought now of what we're trying to understand here. Get me back on. You were saying uh, we go into a, we disassociate, which is like a non-locale, and it was, you were re-explaining the connection between uh, what we learned about um, in knowing that everything's in the DNA, uh, the information stored in the chakras and that, and we're able to go back into those places and clear those areas. Uh, so that we can clear miasms and, exactly. and pain and things. So we're re All uh, right. Now, the further awareness on that flow of thought is that <clears throat> there's three realms of consciousness that we think and act and operate in. There's this frontal lobe, one of the conscious mental state. There's the more step back one of the psychic state which energetically connects telepathically to everyone. And then there's a third realm, which is the subtle field, which we literally know nothing about. Uh, <clears throat> the scientists are talking about it now, too, and trying to determine what it is, but it's so subtle they can't pick up any any factual, much factual information on it, except that's the realm where all these these frontal consciousness rise from. That is the, the consciousness grid of, of God consciousness. That when each it oh now I know geez how logical. There's a, a, a spark of the God force consciousness in your heart, and so that subtle energy realm is resonating directly through into your heart, and because it's it's creating and holding the form of the standing ways of not only the physical form, but of consciousness and thought and everything else, that's the, the, the center, that's the master center that delivers information from the subtle realm as, as innovation and information that hasn't been in the, the field of consciousness before. So if you want to really get the facts, folks, listen to your heart. Thank you, Stephen. The heart knows all. Yay. Um, Frank, when I was, this is Jackie, when I was, uh, I was a massage therapist for 10 years and I always had kind of a strange experience with people coming in and they'd be still talking about their day and what was going on and what hurt and why it was hurting. I always was hearing something different through my heart chakra and feeling something different and so once I quieted them down and got them on the massage table, I was able to direct what my heart was feeling toward a different area of their body. They might think it was specifically their neck, and I knew it was actually coming from um, their heart chakra and working on that spot. So I think what you're talking about is feeling with your heart and getting what's really going on. It's like listening. It's a separate set of ears. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I noticed years ago that that there was a, when I get into healings that I didn't know anything about, uh, you know, just a cold, dead case uh, with no information whatsoever, no background, that I could feel my heart sending out the frequencies of energy um, in association with the energy coming from my hands, just like they're getting hot right now. Uh, and I realized it's a heart was supplying the consciousness, the, the awareness, the knowledge that is even resonating up into my brain as I, as I was doing the healing, telling me, instructing me what to do and how to change the frequencies and, and what is required to bring the healing about. And so, uh, yeah. That's, is that part that's, of, that's part of being an empath, isn't it? Because I feel, I feel what, I feel people's pain. I feel what people are feeling. And I'm thinking that might be part of that same empathic. Well, let's go all the way. Let's say that's all of being an empath. 
Okay. Because it's it's where the the, the inner knowing of everything originates from is that tre- tremendous field of the subtle energy field that holds all knowledge and information. And we're contributing into that constantly with everything we're exploring and doing out here. And this is the God force experiencing all things possible through us and learning and evolving and growing itself. Right. And the hard part, I think, is not putting a shield around your heart to prevent yourself from feeling um, other people's pain and so on. I, I'm constantly having to work with that. Yeah, you can open up just just enough to, to feel it and identify it without taking it on. That, yeah. That's a hard thing to learn. Well, it's break time, JP. Are you there, JP? Vivaldi, Concerto for Two Mandolins. Perfect. Thank you. 
Yep, yep. All yep, right, yep. good. We're all right along. It occurred to me during the break that uh, the information I've been giving you now up to this point, the last, that you may want to remember for your own personal use, this is all up in the frontal lobes of your brain. And if you'll take your point of attention up to your forehead, uh, you'll feel a pressure there, a fullness. Because we incorporated a lot of in- mental information trying to understand the subtle energy fields and all that, how, how the psychic energies work. If you want that to become part of your operating disk, you need to pull that down into your hard disk. So put your point of attention on your forehead and feel all that energy and pressure. It's just stored there short-term memory and thought forms now. And wrap an energy field around it. Just wrap yourself around it. And begin to pull that energy field out of the frontal lobes, down to the base of the brain. Open a trap door there. Let it flow down the spine. And as it flows down, you'll feel it trickling out into various chakra levels associating with information you already know. This is primarily in the high self. We take it all the way down to the heart center and open a a channel from that heart center, from the, the spirit center in the heart that has access to the subtle energy field that stores all this information. Let's open a channel, an intuitive channel, back into the chakra system to bring more information, information that we haven't even brought to our conscious reasoning field yet. So it'll be there, available there as intuition. So we make that request Reach out from the back of the heart and the front of the heart and pull in information. Information that hasn't even come into the human consciousness yet to how to do these things. And open up an associated channel to your high self, your over soul, and make a connection with that grid of consciousness. And holding all these connections together, bring them back to the heart center and down the spine, connect the channel down through the root chakra into earth mind, in the Kasich records, so it's stored in earth mind, as pure information, that'll come back to us as instinctive knowing, now, Now you'll be able to trust that instinctive knowing and your indwelling soul is is like the operator that operates all of this. It's like the keyboard on your computer that operates the information that flows through to the frontal lobes 
that the keyboard is connected to everything in the chakra system and in the subtle energy realm and in the oversoul and earth mind. Now feel a great awareness and extended consciousness that open up in yourselves. I've been able to ask and, and gain information simply by asking it with the frontal lobes of the brain. Actually, it comes from the soul center to the frontal lobes of the brain where you frame the question. And you extend yourself backwards through this extended grid and wait for the response to come back to the soul center, to the brain, where it's extrapolated in conscious reasoning, linear flow of understanding that we can work with. All right. Jackie, you asked what an empath is. There it is. Yes, thank you. Does anyone have any questions concerning this? This seems kind of important. I can hear Gemini, Jones Gemini asking from both sides of her brain, well, how does it work on this side? I'm trying very hard not to analyze it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. So it, it flowed down very smoothly. <laughs> All right, that's nice. I won't expect any questions then. <laughs> you go, John. Maybe later. <laughs> Okay, guys, how did that make you feel? It's been a great learning experience for me. Tranquil. Makes you feel knowing, doesn't it? I know a lot. Okay. <clears throat> well, let's switch into healing mode. <laughs> You you get into healing mode there. I have this autistic little boy in my life. Uh, I have two choices. Either get down on my hands and knees and try to deal with him or tie him up and throw him under the bus. So you guys gave me some great ideas tonight. Thank you. And I think you all, all of you guys touched on it. And the main ingredient is the heart in talking to anyone, much less I, I actually accidentally ran into a 19-year-old autistic girl today. And the way I realized, the way we communicated, like Dr. Yvonne said, they have to be comfortable with you because they feel that energy. They feel that vibration. People, you can talk because they're used to words, but... But a certain amount of people are into the vibe thing, and they are coming from the heart. I also think those autistic kids like us are are staying in their lower self for some reason, but do have a higher self, and the way to meet them is in the heart. And everybody's been talking about that all night and why we get along with animals so well. It's because they come from the heart and more focused on on that type of... Uh, so, and the world is coming that way, and everybody mentioned on it, and and that is the way to healing and, and, and what uh, our new world is coming to. That's the kind of, like, uh, universal language. Thank you. The language of the heart. Mm-hmm. And it feels good, so good. Oh, and the healing hear. too. So we're all in our hearts, and that's why when you asked Frank a second ago how everybody felt, and I must say, just to put it in there, is that it was an uh, expanded heart consciousness where we were flown because this uh, group is connected, and then it would, just went out, just like a sun, and the rays are just pouring out. 
That's uh, all, all right. Know. Let me prove or demonstrate exactly what we were just have been talking about. Rachel, will you give us a tone in the language of light and just let spirits speak through you? And everyone feel this now. Feel this. In Oh, thank you. Enough said. I've got a happy heart. Amor, amor. Uh, lovely. Yay. Okay. Shift to healing requests. Okay. So our first is through Teresa. Uh, and uh, he's from Kingston, Canada. And, oh, bless, he's two years old, Fraser Bond with cerebral palsy. He had a stroke at birth, and his right hand and his right foot are undeveloped. All right. Fraser Bond, Kingston, Canada. All right. What we'll do is tune in and just open his heart to the galactic flow and that pure instinctive consciousness of Earth mind and the galactic flow coming in as the photon energy. Open all of these in yourselves now. And going to the back of the heart to the subtle energy field of the God Force. Making a connection between the God Force Center and Fraser Bond's heart. And we just Become one with Fraser and see the power of the crisis in us. We come into attunement with Fraser's DNA. Taking back into inner uterine. And inner uterine we clear him of the causative factors that resulted in these conditions see the power of the crisis in us in our uterine we see Fraser in the perfect and normal condition and we feel the resonance of his body every cell in his body his DNA responding to our desire and will and intent to focus the God Force Light into his heart center that holds the form of his physical reality and we initiate a progression of consciousness, a progression of healing that in his standing ways of the future 
Every wave will hold the pattern of perfection that will lead him to develop normal, normally. Through the power of the kites within us, we project this into the full extent of Fraser's life. And we release back in Fraser's past, we release and clear any karmic, karmic debts that he's paying off through this condition. Bring it all into balance and harmony that all life might be valuable, sustained to the highest, best good of God force consciousness. And we hold treasure between our hands, balance between our hands, and feel the God force energy flowing into him and around him and through him, into his past and into his future. perfection and so it is all right thank you Teresa let us know in the future how he does mm-hmm. yeah, thank you so very much yeah he was uh, adopted my uh, my husband's niece adopted him at birth and uh, I just got to see him on the weekend all right. Well, they all come with a, a purpose in life. No life is in vain. Okay. What do we have next? We have a request here. Darren Do- Do- Doxter, 70, from Ashwikan, Canada. Debilitating arthritis. This is through Teresa also. All right. We pick up Darren Dexter through Teresa. Teresa, just simply, since you are aware of Darren and familiar with him, just reach your, extend your, your auric awareness around him. And the entire group will come into attenuation. And everyone out there who has arthritis now, utilize this for yourself or for others. And we're bringing in a flow from the galactic center through your hands. And we're releasing Darren from any old fixed attitudes or forms that are in his psychological system, in his hard disk of his computer, releasing any old patterns and forms that would make him need a situation like this to help him to understand the value of flexibility and in his freedom of choice release any any tendencies to judge others or block others in their flexibility and their free choice releasing Darren of in his cellular consciousness, in his DNA, of family flows that has these fixed, interesting religious 
blocks and boxes that need to be released so it can be freed up to experience life with flexibility and unconditional love. Unconditional love is the factors that will clear the mental emotional cause for this and adjust his system. And now, through the power of the crisis in us, we adjust Dexter through the galactic flow, bring these systems back into the normal with a light, an incredible light glowing through his system, through his entire area, through the three orbs of the third dimensional lengths, widths, and heights of his reality and the standing waves in the hologram that is his reality. We see, observe, I can actually observe the arthritis deteriorate, flowing away, flowing away, flowing away. At the zero point in the three dimensional realities, release the form, the patterns, pass into the future with clarity, cleanliness, perfection in the bones, no arthritis, and so it is. Now that's an interesting one. That's a new <laughs> realization of, uh, that just came through how to use the the three orbs and the three dimensions in the hologram of someone whose whose hologram is carrying patterns of disability of any nature. So please download that, internalize it, and remember how to use that. That was a gift. All right. I'm not sure if we did this one last week or not. Um, uh, this is from Marie in uh, British Columbia, Vancouver Island. Do you remember anyone called Jack from Sydney? It doesn't no? sound familiar. I, I think we should do it. Okie doke, let's do this. Hi, it's Marie here. Hope you're all doing well. I wonder if I may request healing energy for my dad, who is 84 and had a fall a few weeks ago. Seems he injured his right hip or thigh muscles, and I know he's been having steady weakening of his leg muscles. He's having difficulty walking, walking and is now barely managing at home with his walker. His name is Jack. He's located in Sydney, Vancouver Island, British Columbia. Thank you so much for your amazing gifts, Marie. All right, Jack. We'll tune our group mind consciousness into you and with empathy and understanding of your condition and the difficulties that seem to be inherent with old age. So let's reverse the old aging process. Jack, I'd like for you to whether you can hear us or not, it doesn't matter. I'd like for you to reach back in time with nostalgia to when you were healthy and had perfect balance and your bones were strong. Bring forward the nostalgia, the memory the desire, the wanting to be as strong as you were before. And we bring that through the zero point, your zero point, and we balance it in the standing waves of your hologram 
as you resonate your desire, your, your nostalgia, your desire to be healthy, the memory of what, what you felt like in healthy, in the three-dimensional reality, the, the three orbs of your hologram, and we see you straightening up, gaining muscle mass, becoming more healthy, thrown off the, the injury, regaining your vitality to the degree that you choose to and express in your life so you can enjoy the continuation of your life. We express this desire and will into the future for as long as you shall choose to live. When you choose to release, you simply let go of this hologram we've created for you. It's the we didn't create it for you. It's the realization that you are a hologram of energy. And I'm looking right through it and seeing all of your conditions and willing them to respond to your desire for perfection. All right, Jack, we wrap you in an energy field. And project it into the future through the zero point of your three-dimensional reality and your hologram. They see you in the pure and perfect condition. All right, Teresa, let us know how that one works. Okay, we have healing request for Beth Stryker. 60 grand mal seizure. Waterloo, Canada. What we don't know if, is if this is a habitual thing. Let me look at that. Yeah, she's had several. Yeah, okay. We're looking at a condition in the base of her brain. Uh, this is the result of an old injury. I have my hands on each side of the base of her brain now. Through the power of the crisis in us, we stabilize this condition, bring back the normal operating system here in the brain and the brain tissue and release the shock, the trauma of that injury. And it could have happened so long ago she doesn't even remember it, but it's, it's there and we feel it. Reorganizing, coming into the pure and perfect condition. And so it is. That was an easy one. We've worked on her before, but uh, this, this was uh, fairly recent and she was at a uh, a lecture and she normally she has them when she's asleep and this one uh, she just kind of nodded off I guess during the lecture yeah. and then yeah she well it's, it's similar to epilepsy when uh, injuries or infections disturb the natural system of the brain it's, and in my observation they always seem to settle down into that base lobe of the brain in a near primitive center that, so that's just, it's just a, a release of energy because the natural flow has been interrupted with scar tissue. There it is. Now it's clearing. That's good. Thank you, Teresa. We needed that. Thank you. Thank All you. Right. So Frank, um, we talked to you about Doing up upgrade on the healing for Kyle and his kidneys. We we uh, we charge the water, the new water that we got for him today, with the healing energy. We just wanted to go through one more time, I guess, and see if we couldn't. 
All right, you have the water jugs. We've already charged them. We have them, yeah. All right, we're going to charge you with the group mind consciousness and bring in also, uh, did you think to bring in the the new energy flow that's coming in from the photon belt? We did that. We used that. Oh, good. Perfect. So let's, let's, Oregon, let's project into this, these water jugs now and everyone just visualize them between your hands. How many jugs are there? Six of them. Six jugs. And our intent is to program these to stimulate Kyle's rejuvenating system to rejuvenate his kidneys to the power of the crisis in us. We see this water passing through his system, rejuvenating his kidneys, and the urination flow opening up and functioning properly, and the entire system coming back into perfection and normalcy as it existed prior to the onset of his malcondition now the water becomes a living essence of the pure and perfect condition again we see see Kyle we see the hologram of his body. And this, if any of you want to experience this, just go to your psychic center and look at Kyle. He's in Bend, Oregon. And see him as a, an energy field, the hologram of all the various energies that make up his organs. He's just energy. And we see the atrophied kidneys and the blood vessels going through the kidneys, opening up, becoming normal, carrying the water to the kidneys where they are operating normally to separate it, clearing the, the, the calcification from the kidneys that it was the original cause of his problem. Hmm, interesting. It's a karmic thing. Yeah. See his entire system open up and to the the three dimensions of that hologram are three orbs of consciousness that manifest the form of his reality, length, width, and heights, each having two hemispheres of energy rotating in opposite directions, expressing the polarity of form. So we see those six hemispheres putting our entire will into the water that will resonate through Kyle, Stimulating the pure and perfect condition. All right, so it is. I'd like to do one too of a lady I worked on today and I worked on her yesterday. Uh, she had a hernia nine years ago and went into the emergency room. <clears throat> And right in the emergency room, they opened her up and put a screen in her and closed her up and didn't follow up, didn't do anything. And the screen for years has been causing oozing sores and bleeding under the skin and an incessant pain. And when I worked with her yesterday, 
we demanifested the screen. And I want to focus the group mind consciousness of everyone and anyone you know who has a similar condition. We want to manifest, demanifest, because I went into the future and pull back exactly what we're doing now in this time frame, pull back from the future, the demanifestation of that screen. We want to see that happening now through the power of the crisis in us. That, that screen is totally de- demanifested, the sores are all healing up, the abscesses, Her name is Cynthia Moore, and she lives in North Carolina. Through the power of the crisis in us, we see this in a pure and perfect condition. What's interesting is she said there was no pain today. Uh, after the treatment yesterday, but this treatment is the one that I sent, reached into the future to pull back into that point to clear that condition. So this, through the power of the Christ within us, no time or space. We clear Cynthia more of that condition. And so it is. Okay, we have Hilda Lee, State, Oregon, high blood pressure, lives on, even on meds, causes dizziness after eating. Hilda Lee. I'm tuning into Hilda. All right. The high blood pressure. Whoa. Hilda, let's release from your the stress from your life in the past and the fact that you take on the stresses of others. You feel responsible for the family and others and you download their stresses but you don't process the, or bring, <clears throat> give solution to whatever it is you're working with because you're an empathetic person that loves to help fix people. So release from yourself that propensity to hold the stress of others or your families in your system. When I tune into you, it's just like walking into a, um, an electric grid. What do they call a transformer station? The energy is so strong around you. Release that energy. Learn to float that energy down your spine and into earth mind. Through the power of the crisis in us, we see Hilda Lee in the perfect and normal condition. And that's why the Dizziness causes, or eating causes dizziness is because of the addition of any more energy in that system, uh, just overwhelms it.
All right, now we're close to Hilda Lee. We'll go to Mike. Mike has water pressure that he's destroying that he's got. You want to stimulate his illumination system. Stimulate the kidneys, bring the lymph fluid back into the lymph system to release, be cleared and released through the, through the liver. All right. Let's see how that works for you, Mike. If not, let, let us know. <clears throat> Traces. Palmer. Palmer has a request for her husband, Doug Frazier. 72 has a persistent infection on his left arm. What's the source of the infection? What happened there, Teresa? It just started out as a scratch, and then it got infected, and then it's uh, about the size of the palm of your hand now, and it's like a little pimple, and then it's getting, it opened up like a, like an open sore, and just in the last couple of days, it's still quite dark and red but it's is it like a, like a boil a yeah streptococcus infection possibly it's like a pimple but it gets quite large underneath yeah yeah, yeah it's a, it sounds like a staphylococcus okay uh, i've had staph and that's exactly how it acted hmm. All right, we're, we have our right hand over that area now, resonating an energy field into the staphylococcus. It is neutri- neutralizing the life force that it draws from Doug's body, neutralizing its ability to draw energy and multiply so it'll live out its each cycle live out its life cycle and perish without multiplication through the power of the crisis in us we see Doug in a perfect and normal condition now whatever you do if it doesn't clear up really quick uh, go get some antibiotic because that thing get, if it gets into his blood system or the lymph system it can be deadly. Okay. Thank you. Don't fool around with it. Mm-hmm. All right. Very good. Frank. Could we do a healing on my nephew, John Robert? This is Catherine. Mm -hmm. He had a soccer game yesterday, and he got hit in the head really hard um, above his right eyebrow and had a goose egg. But his arms also, whenever he hangs his hands down, they hurt. And he says that it's almost like he can see... Um, the veins, like there's blood clots in them, but if he raises them up above um, his waist, they feel fine. Yeah, his neck is 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 a vertebrae out there. Whiplash thing. All right, I'm we're wrapping an energy field around his neck now, and counterclockwise. Gently pushing that back into alignment. Bringing the natural alignment back into his neck. 
natural curvature, taking the pressure off the nerves, take the pressure off the nerves, wrapping them where they've been abraded. All right, repairing the disc. Okay. I don't think the goose egg is going to bother him any, is it? Does he have any headaches or? Um, I think he's more concerned about his hands, so. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the pinch nerve. Well, I will say that I did work on the knot on his head last night, so. Okay, it doesn't, yeah. doesn't appeal to me, so. I think we're okay on that one. My thanks. All right. Anyone else have any problems? Um, yes, please, Frank. Um, I have a client in Cambridge. His name is Rex in New Zealand. And um, he's had irritable bowel syndrome, but it is getting worse, and they now have diagnosed it as Crohn's disease. So appreciate any help that the group can give. Um, I found quite a lot of resistance to the treatment. His wife sends him and wants him to do sessions, but there's something there that, um, I don't know, that isn't ready. So I'm sure the group can help. So thank you very much. All right. The first thing that popped in my head, uh, in the irritable bowel symptoms, it's it's like a something in... In the micro, microbiology of the bowels that's causing the irritation. Uh, that's cause, oh yeah, there's something there. It's like an organism or, or an imbalance in the natural micro organisms there and imbalance is causing a toxin that's that's irritating the blood vessels, those very delicate little blood vessels that line there. And this is also creating the Crohn's disease, which somehow triggers, accelerates the aging process and it through the system. So we'll, uh, let's put him in the field between our hands. And we'll work through Yvonne, just have him in between your hands, Yvonne, and we'll all generate the energy through you. Thank you. Through the power of the Christ within us, we see a balance coming back into the the microorganisms in his gut and the support system, the energetic support system. That, that helps his, that the body has to have to digest food. We see this coming back into the perfect normal condition. We see the hologram of the disturbance and in, in the, in the energetic manifestation of the form. We see the pure natural condition coming back into the balance of the energetics of the organisms. We release, release, release the Crohn's disease symptoms. Totally clear his entire digestive system.
and we release the mental emotional cause for this imbalance. I can't quite put my finger on it. It seems like he's uh, a very stubborn person. Uh, every one, every healing and every illness is a, has a spiritual lesson in it. And let's hope that this brought him to his own state of consciousness where he's aware or that the healing makes him aware of his, his need for the for the right kind of spirituality that isn't dependent on religion but of his connection to the God force and you can help him with that if he asks Yvonne it's almost as if he has a curse or something yeah. or, or chose to take it on exactly yeah big resistance to anything any connection outside him all right. So we wrap him in an energy field and uh, and send a flow, uh, connect him to a flow of unconditional love from the galactic source through Yvonne. So that every time she directs her attention to him, the flow will be reinforced. And we project that into the future. Okay, we have two minutes left. Yeah, okay. perfect way to end. I'd like to thank, you. To thank you, thank you, thank you. Live here by yeah. Joan, reminding you. everyone that you have a show Saturday and Wednesday morning at nine o'clock Pacific Standard Time. And uh, these shows, you use your subtle energy techniques to release and ease the stress of Mother Earth from land, sea, climate, and man-made changes around the world. If you have any questions at all, visit our website, www.citronics.com, P-S-I-T-R-O-N-I-C-S dot com. There's always a magical donate button. Thank you very much, Frank. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Oh. Good night. Good night. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night. Universal Mind Radio. Uh, Thanks very much. Gotta go. Bye. Bye, Dave. Bye. Thank you.